They were getting down Everest the fast way. This was in the spring climbing season this year. It was my third time on Everest. It was the first time I got to do this. We spent five days in camp two. My client was hoping to go straight into a summit push, but got sick. So we decided to bail. The plan was for me and Ben, the other cameraman, to walk down to base camp and then we'd fly with the clients to Kathmandu, get some good food, some good rest, and then come back to Everest and try the summit again. But the next morning we get up and they say and there's places going in the heli down from camp too. Bush. The pilot was Simone Moro, Italian alpinist and Himalayan heli rescue pioneer. He's actually climbed eight 8,000ers, half of them in winter, so he's like a bit of a boss. Unfortunately, during the 2013 Everest season, he was nearly killed by a mob of Sherpa in Camp 2 after calling one of them a motherfucker. I bet he wished he had his heli then. Since then, things seem to have calmed down and he now works regularly alongside Sherpa performing long line heli rescues. The airframes used at this altitude are French Airbus AS350 B3s, originally certified in 1977. To land at Camp 2, all seats are stripped out and pilots use oxygen systems. In May 2005, French test pilot Didier Dalcel waited for a gap in climbing to break the world record for highest heli landing by parking his bird on the summit of Everest. Sadly, it turned out the flight record was corrupted and he had to get up the next morning and do it all over again. Someone else who'd been to the top of Everest twice was Wang Jing. She tried to climb for a third time in 2014, but tragically an avalanche killed 16 Sherpa and the icefall was closed. Undeterred, Wang and her team jumped in a heli, flew to Camp 2, and became the only team to summit Everest from the south side that season. Personally, I believe a successful summit means getting yourself from base camp to the top and back down to base camp yourself. But apparently the Nepalese tourism ministry disagrees, and on top of her certificate, Wang was given this cool statue. At least she seemed to thank her Sherpa. Thank you very much! Which is more than can be said for this dude here. After video of Ravi's amazing rescue from the death zone went viral, he did the TV rounds and started flogging t-shirts, but apparently forgot to thank any of the Sherpa involved. People then did some digging, realised he'd actually blocked one on Instagram. And the mother of all pylons ensued. I think all internet pylons are kind of disproportionate, but it's also nice to see a growing awareness of the amazing work the Sherpa do. I push myself a little closer to the edge. Anyway, I'm missing the base camp doggo, so let's bounce, yeah? I'll point out a few landmarks on the way down, and we might even be able to wave at some climbers.
sadly, when we got to base camp, it turned out the heli to Kathmandu was actually full. So me and Ben had to stay in our luxury VIP base camp tent. <laughs> it's a hard life being an expedition filmmaker. <laughs> the clients came back and we were preparing to go on our summit push. The day before we went up, there was just an endless roaring from the skies as helis ferried the fuck. There's just bodies <laughs> flying above you. For a little second you think, is this a good idea? Should I, should I be going where they're coming from? But of course you do. Souls of the animal kingdom. Eagle, fox, bottlenose dolphin, octopus, house cat. Okay. We went up, actually had quite a smooth summit push and summited about 420. Hey. Thank you so much to my main man, Dawa, and everyone at Seven Summits, and so much gratitude to Tonya for another sick adventure. Why are you grinning? If you enjoyed the ride, please consider subscribing. And if you want to check out a drone video from the summit of K2, the Savage Mountain, have a look at this. Much love, and I'll see you soon.